Yeah, so sorry for being here, and <laughs> welcome to my uh, talk, uh, Education Communication. So, I'm Angel Bertini, and I'm uh, interested in InfoSec since uh, 89, when uh, we had to remove a virus that infected our system with our own hex editor, and a French magazine provided information on this. This was a computer, 10 megahertz, so that's where I think I started being interested in InfoSec. And currently, I'm security engineer at Google. So, this is episode three of this keynote trilogy, and I hope it's over soon so that I can go back to technical talks. Uh, this talk is not about showing any of my success, but more my failures as usual. And uh, this is, uh, again, focusing on the ba basics, not necessarily limited to InfoSec, but of course there is some content uh, limited to InfoSec. It's totally experimental. I mean, it's a keynote, and I don't have an advisor or something. And but definitely, I dump a lot of potentially unpopular opinions. I'm obviously biased, and I'm here to share and learn, so feel free to witch hunt, to do witch hunt later on. Uh, so I did uh, uh, two talks before, one in, Bo in Bochum where I spoke to students about their future, I mean the mistakes they can do that I did in my studies, and then last year at, Hak uh, at uh, Haklu uh, about uh, the failures as an InfoSec professional, and now preparing, uh, talking about what you can do regarding your surroundings. So uh, this talk is dedicated to those who blame, humiliate, and belittle, and pretend they are superior or professional. There are too many in, this, in the industry. Uh, I used to definitely be like this too, so it's also one of my own mistakes. So now let's first start and imagine a life where everything is secure, like your baker uh, applies all the security rules and then he, you know, to prevent that there is any poisoning in the baguette you buy or whatever. So then nothing would work, right? Do you, do, do you expect your baker to read frack and explore archive or you just want some good bread? That could be potentially poisonous, but who cares? The security risk is low. Our daily life is now bound to computers. We all, except me actually, carry a powerful computer, smartphone and everything. And uh, is unlike when I started uh, with this 10 megahertz uh, uh, 8086 that you saw earlier, uh, now computers are not reserved to experts anymore. It's like really in any everyone's life, even the grandparents and the youngs at least. Uh, in, at the age of three, I think in Japan, they consider it's normal that the kids have a device to be connected because without, they cannot have a social life, social interaction with other kids at three at the age of three. And again, one of the essential needs in life is that there is a safety. And since we are bound to um, uh, use have computers for everyone, then I believe that InfoSec is a life requirement for everyone. It's not just our job. It's also something that is part of daily life. Then it means that experts are a need for non-experts because that's why we have a job and we need to share our expertise. We are the one person, but whether we like it or not, we need to share this, this uh, knowledge. I told you it's full of unpopular opinions. We, I believe, again, I'm slightly optimistic there, that we are on the same boat. It's not us versus them. We, there's no ivory tower. If they screw up, then our whole security lowers because we are using the same networks and everything. And if we make understand, then eventually, I mean, it's, it's happening, but this is what this talk is about. Uh, we make understand, then the overall security and awareness, it, it will improve. So it's not really they are stupid and we are the, 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 the good ones. I know what you're thinking, and I was actually thinking that. Who cares? And then I saw my kids going to uh, um, ground school or before, you know, kindergarten. And there is this very thin book that explains internet with this very shitty analogy and whatever. And I'm like, okay, I need to do something because if ignorant people share, share, spread their ignorant, their wrong assumptions to stuff, it started to contaminate my own kids. And I was like, okay, I need to do something. And this is where, after, I realized that there is little information available. And remember, kids... Users, it's a bit the same. They are not experts, otherwise they, they would be the one doing the keynote right now. They can be knowledgeable, but sometimes they're not, and sometimes they're just not interested because they don't see the point of being interested in the first place. And on the other hand, they are can be easily bored or intimidated. So uh, your boss or your kid, it could be the same, right? And maybe your boss is even less interested in what you say than your own kids usually. So... If you don't care about idiots, then maybe actually you'll care about the mini you. And this is indeed what triggers for me when I saw that my kids starting to have very shitty knowledge of their friends saying that they can hack anything. And they were like, okay, this is not how it works. I need to do something like this talk. So 
unpopular opinion is that I believe education and communication is a part of our job. We have some responsibility, but also the benefit of being better at communicating is that we maybe can convince our boss in a better way. Maybe. Uh, again, it's very hypothetical. So uh, that's the first step of this talk. So now, what's a hacker? Everybody has their own definition, maybe, and especially there's a lot of pride in this question. And of course, there is a lot of gatekeeping. How do you recognize hacker? Oh, I didn't have my bro. I have a calc on me, but yeah, I don't have my black hoodie. But at least the, I would say the first common thing is that they care about the expertise. It's not the appearance. And the next person sitting next to you, especially, I mean, even if you maybe don't know them, is probably as good or better than you are, even if they are not like obviously hackers. What's important is inside, right? I believe hacking is the essence of hacking is first curiosity, then. Of course, from this curiosity, there is some activity and creativity mixed, and this is all what defines hacking in general. And of course, it has to be in green color over black background. So what's hacking then? Yeah, a state of mind. Then comes the expertise, and the mentor said that long ago. And uh, then it ended by uh, accidents on the, it's a coincidence on the Hack Lucky t-shirt of this year. Now I believe that when I saw my kids behaving when they were very young, I was like, they are, they are young hackers. They are, they, they, my second one is very good at social engineering. He, he was forging signatures. He was stealing information. He was lying. The others are good at doing all kind of weird stuff. And this is a creativity that you don't even have when you exploit something. So I believe that initially we are all born hackers because we're all naturally curious and experimenting because we don't know. We don't know the rules. Therefore, we're trying just everything. All of us. The only stuff we know at, when we are born is that, oh, there's something I'll put in my mouth and I'll suck on it. That's all. And then, so what happens next? That's the problem. Well, the problem is that then comes school and we're sorted in correct categories and we're formatted. Uh, to um, this summer, I had to study for interviews, uh, and then I realized that the best way for me to learn was actually the opposite of what happens in the classroom. So first, uh, when my kids, uh, my kids were, I saw that they're moving from very creative to suddenly they, 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 they answered the exercise correctly, but they failed, they didn't have a perfect mark because they didn't even answer it the right way they were supposed to. What does that mean? And then they are supposed to stay still and listen. It's like spamming and they are supposed to be happy and just listen, even though my brain totally disconnects. I mean, imagine, remember your last boring meetings. How long did it take to, for you to disconnect? 10 seconds, maybe? Especially it's the VP. Uh, well, I didn't say that. So, uh, the brain has availability windows and the classroom doesn't care about that. And then I think the actual goal of school is to learn some social rule of being, of supporting to, 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 to survive in a group. And then there is some knowledge spamming on, as an excuse on top of it. But it doesn't work with everyone. And also there's this thing where the best are worshipped and the worst are, sh the worst of the class are like seen as stupid. And this, uh, encourage everyone to game the system and to hype what they can do. And as adults, we, a lot of adults tend to do the same thing and then not realize how wrong I think I was now. So standard education gives a system to game because then kids start to adapt to what the teacher expects and they don't necessarily say what they had in mind in the first place. And because they don't do, ex uh, they, from that, they have rewards and punishments. So they, it's really killing their creativity. And what's the point of that? The point of that is that it's a sacrifice for everyone so that at least the whole life model follows some standard rules. Like you go to the baker, you give, you give some money and you expect a baguette and not a hacker reaction of read the fucking manual and then study uh, wheat growing. You know, you, that's the, how the model is supposed to work. So standardized education tends to squash this curiosity. But it's not like they actually give up. It's not their fault. It's just they adapt. And when they see that with better playing with the rules, they come with rewards, then they just adapt in this direction. They want less suffering and less uh, punishment. So this is indeed the goal of the school officially. Learn the rules so that you can break them later. But first, this l rules learning actually tramples uh, their creativity. So it's just normal that we follow models. Again, as I said, you expect the bakers to work all the same. And in the end, 
even though we are very different in terms of a, in front of a hex editor or in front of a computer, then most of our life is exactly the same. So we are not so special. And I think many users, many end users, boss, kids, still have this curiosity, but maybe this curiosity actually survived for something else than computer and security, such as bread, for example, or brewing beer. That's also a good thing. So the other thing is that standardized education defines the norm and security, whether it's infosec or not. Security cares about the exception. So our job with, that has to do with security is interested in the opposite of the norm. So our mindset is, necess is necessarily a bit at the opposite of what the standard education had to provide. Now, another thing I hear often is that people, hackers should be known, hackers should present, and hackers should, uh, if, if they cannot, someone cannot be a hacker because you never heard of them. But then when you dig enough, you will meet some people who, if they have nothing to prove and they're already hacking happily at home, they may don't care at all about giving a single talk or a single CV, as long as it's nice, it's fine, and they can survive with their own model. So very often, uh, I see too many people trying to relate that this person gave a talk or, oh, no, they're not a hacker because they didn't do this or that. And it's actually wrong. I don't see, if you are happy with what you're doing and you're still hacking at home, you have no in incentive to be actually famous in any way. It's totally distinct to skill and the fame. And some people are famous and they have little skill. Like me, maybe. Uh, and yeah, so, so, and so I believe there's no like idiot. I mean, not all of them are idiots. I, I know some, well, they're not worth mentioning here. And if you know, if I know stuff that you don't, well, I don't have no reason to be proud in that. And if you, if, uh, because I, there is, Every, every single of you knows something that I don't, and it's totally normal. It's not a mistake, and I shouldn't be ashamed, even if maybe it's obvious to you. So if you see someone saying to someone else, hey, how come you don't know that, or whatever, it's, it just shows that that person is arrogant, immature, or just impatient, like I will see in the parenting manner. So hackers are not superior in any way. We just have different passions, like many other people, and there's no ivory tower. And again, I think security and info, infosec is at the opposite of standardized education, which is why so many people won't necessarily understand us. So, any question at this stage? Okay. So, another topic is that how old is infosec? Infosec is starting to be taken seriously because we don't, there are enough regular hacks nowadays that we don't need to prove that hacks actually happen, they are not a myth, and they have consequences. So this is the Equifax bridge. At least you can convince people that they lost some money temporarily because of the bridge. Uh, another lesson on thing is that when there was this web, uh, internet uh, provider that was wiped via, by a hack via vulnerability, and then the whole company was out of business and the, uh, the boss committed suicide the next day. So now I think at least exactly like a, a, a child saying uh, rubbish, now people kind of believe that hacks are real. So. On the other hand, hype is tempting but not constructive, like the Bloomberg and Supermacro story. And uh, just people sp uh, posting about their uh, bug bounties and not actually improving the knowledge is also a bit immature. So I think compared to what my son does, uh, InfoSec is its early teens. It's still immature. It starts to say stuff that makes sense, but then it's more interested in self-promotion, in inflating what it does, and then whenever it did a mistake, like uh, people didn't learn from us, then we blame them. So I still, I think InfoSec is in early teens, so 12, uh, he's born in May, okay, whatever. But I have a good element of comparison at home. So now let's move to something else. Your mission that we would consider impossible would be to explain meltdown to your grandma, your boss, or your kid, or your grandpa also. Maybe your grandpa actually understands meltdown, or maybe not, or the grandma. I, so when I, uh, sorry, uh, as I told you, I was really worried that my kids have, uh, I start to, to do something for my kids' knowledge, and then I realized that the available online matter are very limited, and sometimes they are like very shitty. It's like, there are very few uh, corporate paper that are actually valuable to teach even to get something inf interesting for us, experts and professionals. So what about standard people? It's like 
most of the online material is really bad and too complex, too much jargon, too much self-promotion, buzzword and hype, and so too many acronyms to take keep track of. So very uh, hard to reuse. So uh, one thing is that documentation, when documentation is never rewarded, when you create some documentation that is reusable by someone else, so this is a poster ID to explain crypto mistakes, you're never rewarded professionally. We'll talk about that later. And also there is the problem that when you write your own documentation at home, you really have to be passionate because when you talk to people, you see their reaction. But when you write some documentation at home, you don't have f in, in a feedback. And even if your best friend provides feedback, it looks like you're interesting 10 people. And one of my posters was seen to 200,000 times, but I never thought that when I was making it. I was like, my wife was even telling me why, why I was drawing binary on the screen. It's It's just... Totally opposite because writing documentation feels totally, uh, how do you say, uh, ingrateful. It's like, it doesn't feel like there is any benefit. But on the other hand, once you pro publish the, your actual worthy documentation, it scales. And this is passive. You, I mean, unless you keep your day looking at how many hits you have. Okay. Maybe that's interesting to you. But at least it's, that's a good thing that, but the problem is that it's, def it's de impossible to predict in advance. So, um, people say that there is a lot of knowledge, but then it's because people are just idiots and they don't want to learn. I think it's more like, uh, this, so this guy is just blaming and uh, arrogant, and I think it's just that already the tools and docs require expertise. So if you say, oh, you don't know this, hey, I wrote this somewhere, you should, ha why didn't you learn everything I wrote so far? And if someone had read everything I learned, I wrote so far, then it mean it implies they're an expert, it's not just for everybody. So. It's probably because the resources actually available online are actually bad or not us usable by non-experts. And again, documentations are in a corporate environments for favors measurable short-term goals. So it's totally the opposite of document writing. So they don't, it doesn't raise stock price. You will never get promoted for that. So it feels totally useless. And I completely agree with that, which means then all good documentation can only come, I think, from passionate individuals that do that at a spare time. So it's like uh, SM, but still it's useful for the whole company, for the whole community because it scales. And there is no computer, I mean, or very few computer security kids just to teach them the basics. I was even thinking, is there such a thing as a dual Raspberry distribution where you could, with a Raspberry, learn to hack another Raspberry that is like vulnerable, but something simple for kids to teach them basics? Uh, even this kind of thing still miss, is still missing. So if I'm wrong, please tell me so that we can do it at home. So we need to demonstrate more to show how trivial things are. And it's the same kind of bugs, XSS, all over again. And there's no like Wikipedia where you can explain simply the typical vulnerabilities and bugs to, to, to your kids, to your boss, to your parents, and so on, to non-experts. Any other, and still no question? Another, sorry? Yeah. Finishing my class. Another problem is that very often you see some people complaining on Twitter that, hey, this person wrote about this and I wrote about this two years ago. And this is a problem because it's, what does it mean? It's like, it's not, it doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, again, uh, the, the, why, why do people complain about that? First, maybe we don't value this knowledge well enough, so we think it's not worth sharing. But actually for the audience, it means like there are two versions of this of the same thing, so they are still happy that they have two cakes rather than you thinking it doesn't make sense to publish that. And also, is it immaturity because you want something that is f brand new and if someone t takes your documents the same thing, then it means they are trying, trying to steal your fame? Uh, it doesn't make sense. So we often dif forget that uh, just publishing the same thing with a different style can make things click in someone else. So it's worth retrying. And there are plenty of different approach to teaching the same thing all over again. And we all had sometimes a very bad teacher about something we love or we something we think we hate and suddenly we have a great teacher and suddenly you suddenly like history or biology because you have a great teacher. So we see that even for the same uh, subject, 
It, does, it doesn't hurt to have a different perspective on the same subject, while we always think that every conference should have something new. So it's okay to write some, about something that is already documented. We still teach math, and there are still new books for that. And at least just the only difference is that just don't claim it's new. It's not a shame. But I think the next evolution of InfoSec is not focusing just on what's new, but just for retrying, explaining it differently, better, or in other ways. And of course, the world is fake. I mean, the world, the internet is full of fake resources. So snake oil and FUD. So the supposedly uh, white papers that just says, uh, the, the, oh, we detect this malware actually by our stuff. And also, there are all these uh, super uh, 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 keynotes or uh, disguised marketing that just say, uh, in the end, oh, we are so cool. And actually, it's just to raise, uh, yeah, there's no, it doesn't change anything. Also, the thing is, when you observe the, all these papers just describing malware and not providing any information about how to take actions against them. And I think the show must stop. It's not like... It's good that we go on this kind of show, this fetishism of newest bugs, uh, and especially when it's disguised as marketing. So the common styles of education, supposedly education, is first make fun, belittle, blame or shame, and the other is like repeating the same stuff and expecting the people to suddenly understand after repeating the same thing a hundred times. And then, actually, they're bored to death and they just kind of accept. They are not very understanding, listening, but it's extremely... But the person that kept repeating pretense, they, they've been teaching something while they were just spamming and boring the others. And the problem is, is I, I even understand that because when my kids were younger, sometimes when you see that your kids don't be, behave, you have yourself doubt that you want them to, to obey you don't actually want them to learn and understand. You want them to obey and fix the fucking bug. I mean, not to my kid, but yeah. Uh, so you want, uh, and this starts, you, then you have self-doubt and you kind of lose control. And then you just say, do this now. And when you do that, it seems to give faster result because then the kid re reacts or the guy is like scared and with the hype, they actually maybe fix the bug in a hasty way. But... It, what the actual consequence of that is that yes, you save some time in appearance, but uh, the o the uh, audience just stop listening. Is more like they are obeying and fearing. And then when you think, well, that was good for their education. That's the way I did that for their own good. Then maybe you could uh, even Himmler was saying such a thing that you get what you want by fear, rather than making people actually understand and obey. And again. I believe it's more important, you get better results when you show that you care. When you, instead of blaming or just lecturing and re reciting some endless uh, stuff, you see someone made a mistake. First suggest. And sometimes the brain is not available, or sometimes the brain is available just right now, so take this opportunity right now. And not necessarily, uh, how can I say, uh, don't necessarily uh, give the whole answer. Just sometimes... If you see that the person is already trying, just guide and maybe let find. And so first show that you care. Try to put the person in confidence. Of course, it's a lot of effort, but it's really rewarding because then it was not fear. It was not authority. And if you make someone understand by themselves, then they will really listen further and they will, that's the way they can learn. So teaching is about making people learn and understand and not spamming or belittling. So really, first connect, simplify, but also make it clear that it's simplified because when it's too simplified, people just say, oh yeah, that's easy, anyone could do that. And again, a proof of concept is worth 100 words. So uh, one of the things that ha happened in... Uh, uh, um, there was this vulnerability in Google Drive where basically uh, I could control um, any PDF you would receive. I would control what you see and what you print. So basically, you have an attachment, you click on the PDF, you see, then you print, then you see actually a totally different document. And it could be just the same document with a difference in a number in your bill, or it could be just a joke, like a you... But the, the good thing is that of that uh, vulnerability is that I show that to our lawyer. And she understands very quickly, because you don't need... The, the, the proof of concept is self-explanatory. Open, click, 
print, and it's not like it's poppy calc and everything, and you need, when I wear this t-shirt, a lot of people ask me, so what's the joke about the calculator? I don't get it, because it's common for us, but it's not so common for non-experts. But if you have some, some, so for some proof of concept, they are maybe not a, such a big security risk, but they are very good for pedagogy. And in this case, it's very good to give people a sense of the risk and the security, the, the, the problems that they can have. Uh, once I, um, my son was playing with the fire and he was trying to push his friend just as a game toward the fire. I grab his hand, I say move slowly, and we went uncom uncomfortably close to the fire until we really felt it, like we were scared. I, I, I did that very carefully and we was here with him. And we start to have the, the heat on our face and we are like, do you understand the risk now? Can we stop? And we, in this case, when you really feel the risk, the security risk, you become like an animal and you only focus on what's going to happen next. So that's why I say, well, you won't believe what would happen next if you throw your friend in the fire. And it's the same. Do, it's, uh, do you, can you give a sense of risk to your management regarding something? Uh, my usual suggestion is, can you put the boss credit card number in the internal database? So that with the next time it's breached, they have a, they share the pain. So this is not uh, my employer's opinion. This is my personal opinion. But definitely it helps to connect people, give them a sense of real risk. Like, oh, you say we're safe. Okay, we put your personal data there and your kids' data there too, right? Wait a minute. So one more thing. Education is not limited to classes or training. When you see someone that you like, every action they take is a vote. Like, if you favor something, then you say, then you see, if you see, if you, if I would say, hey, write more docs, but I would never, then, uh, it's, it's another way of educating the people regarding your interest, your effort, the efforts you put. You, by putting some weight into it, you favor it, right? So if you, and remember everyone, has potential followers. It's not about the stupid numbers on Twitter or something. It's really, you have the, all the potential but what you do to inspire people in, uh, uh, in your surrounding, your friends, your colleagues, your peers, your family. And by saying, this is the right thing to do or this is not the right thing to do, I don't want to do that, then it's also a way to educate because people say, if that person says that, then I should try the same. I mean, it's, it's on the other hand, it's... Uh, action outruns risk. Yet yeah, it's very easy to retweet something. Yeah, yeah, let's do it, but actually do nothing about it. It's easy to be an actor and pretend you're awesome on the stage, but it's much harder when you're in a meeting and says, "I don't agree with that." And again, sharing something on Twitter is just a single click away. What's the impact of that? Maybe it's good for your ego, but standing up in a meeting and saying, "I don't agree with that," is much more powerful, but much much more harder. And you don't need to be important, famous. I remember meeting some friends, they say, you're inspiring. And they were like, how could I? But it's just, you don't control that you do that. And changing all you, only, only your surroundings, your daily colleagues can have, or certainly has more impact to your life than Richie, than speaking at a major event that just listens, but maybe doesn't relate. So it's not about saying nice things during a talk. It's more like thinking, if I do that during the next meeting or something, maybe this is the way I want things to go. And this is the way I teach people by changing my actions. So another thing is that we know that things are broken. But again, we keep it proving, but just to ourselves. There are, we keep finding new bugs. We'll find new bugs. But there are too few hands to fix bugs. So therefore, we need to convince further than ourselves, our group of experts. We improve tools, but it's not enough. And the, all these talk and blog posts and magazines, Poker GTA 4, others, Frack, they still only reach our community because they are unreadable by other people. So we need documentation, better kids' book, simpler website, and pedagogic proof of concept examples. So I believe that the next evolution of InfoSec is really sharing all stuff in a better way, stopping the hype, and maybe beyond the CVSS score, so the S in CVS is scoring, but it's a scoring system score, uh, the Maybe the, if you have interesting vulnerabilities that are, that are very impactful in terms of pedagogy, then please share it and make more noise about them. The conclusion. 
leave your ivory tower. You're not that lead. They are not all idiots. Better communication helps first yourself to convince your management and to save your kids from doom. And remember, defense is political, so you need to convince people anyway. InfoSec is much more than new bug findings, and online materials are too limited. And we shouldn't share known facts better, and there's a typo, because talks and everything only reach our community. Yeah. So I believe that's the next evolution of InfoSec, that we'll leave the teens stopping on focusing on all this and then resharing knowledge in a better way. Do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the talk, uh, which is uh, quite enlightening. Um, one question, how do you uh, explain meltdown to your grandmother? <laughs> I still have one alive, I was about to say. That. <laughs> oh, that's a good challenge. Yeah, what's my deadline? <laughs> Five minutes. Wow, that's hard because already explaining what the CPU is is already hard, right? I remember my, gran my grandma... Uh, last one of the last things she said was like, so uh, at what time during the week is the weather forecast on the internet? So yeah, it's going to be probably harder than what I yeah initially said. So that's why I said mission impossible, right? Here. Um, I have I have one one question. Uh, how did you solve the problem, the educational problem of your children in computer science, or or there it's in in process because you started your presentation uh, uh, giving the example of the bad education for your children. So did you find already a solution for them? So first, it's understanding that the problem exists, then really taking steps. And uh, when uh, I, I, a few months ago, my nine-year-old stole his first password. So I told him that uh, hacking is not so uh, tolerated in the family and so on. And then I wanted to say, if you want to learn, we can do that. And I started to introduce. So uh, just, I, it's not like I have a solution. It's ongoing effort. And actually, one of my goals, so I was... Um, trying to, to, to move, to, 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 to find a new job a few months ago. And it was either if I get, I get the new job or I go back in my home and I start writing books to, for kids. And I was accepted. <laughs> but yes, I, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I think most of you know that I'm doing a binary visualization and all these kind of simplified representation. I'm currently working on trying to automate that and provide useful tools so that uh, we can explain things more easily. So that's how I'm currently trying. Wish me luck. Uh, thank you. And um, I want to point out that if you had written this in 1985, then I might not now have the reputation that comes with having learned all of it the hard way. And I'm wondering if you're planning to write up uh, all of this uh, in the form of an etiquette document so that we can refer newcomers and some of our friends to this material. Thank you. So, 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 sorry, can you repeat? I didn't get the part of the question. <laughs> uh, this was a great talk, but um, it will be uh, more impactful if I can point people at it, if I can refer people to it and say, you should read this document because it will help you in your career. And I just wonder, do you have plans to write this up uh, as a medium article or something else that would be like the old netiquette RFCs in the early days of the Internet so that uh, not everyone needs to learn this the hard way who was not in this room to hear this talk? So you mean at least just share the slides? <laughs> or... <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I really plan to write more. Uh, I also have a plan of explaining crypto stuff and, you know, just covering basics slowly. Give me time. We don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. This is the last part of your trilogy. Yes, it's about time. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Uh, thank you. I think I also think that it was a great talk, and um, 
I was thinking about similar stuff for uh, quite a long time now. And I wonder if you found uh, a way to uh, get some basic security knowledge uh, at scale to the average users. Sorry, at scale? And what do you say then? So if you found a solution to get the this, some basic security knowledge uh, to the average users at scale, I well, mean, you can put it on the internet in a documentation, but how do you get the users to actually read it? Yeah, you you hope that they like it enough so that they share it with others. <laughs> I didn't try to look into that, but that's how, I mean, people still uh, search for it, and if they find, I mean, if there is a, some kind of recommended books or something, it's it's that simple. It's nothing new in the idea, but it's just that it's done very little for InfoSec, while if you want to, a math book, you know you have math books in the local library. That's what I mean. It's like even the new books in InfoSec are still about uh, the new forms of hacking, not just explaining the basics again. I mean, okay, there is the manga series, there is the first head, the head first, I mean, it's not security books. But yeah, that's the idea. There are already very few books in security. Therefore, there are even fewer books for security that are accessible. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, thank No you. better suggestion, no miracle. Okay, thank you. Any more? Any more questions? Hi. Um, you you told that uh, fear is not a good idea to learn something to the to people, but in security, I find it really difficult to learn something about security without scaring them. Because el every time you give an example, you give an example where you you breach the, their security, so you scare them. No, it's not the same. Make them understand the risk, exactly like I did with my son and the fire. Yes. But oh, you, yeah. you you scared your son a little bit. Yeah, but the, I, I was scared too. <laughs> And I share the risk. So at least it's not like, hey, do go with the fire because he's not going to say it. They say, let's do it together. And we walk slowly and we start to feel the heat. It's like, oh my, and I'm, I'm really hoping he doesn't do anything stupid and I think he's the same. And at least I was also making sure there's nothing too bad that happens. But that's one, one important thing is like the, hey, it's your fault, asshole. But it's more like, we are in this together, first thing. And then, of course, so that nothing can go back too wrong for this exercise. But again, it's not, it's not about saying, do it now. In this case, they will just fear you and not the risk. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. Yeah. Another thing I was doing when my son didn't want to tidy his stuff and it was, uh, the, the room was cluttered is like, uh, again, give me your hand. Let's close our eyes and le let's walk in the room. And when there are Lego rooms, and the first thing that broke, or the first person who steps on a Lego, too bad. And I can tell you, just start that. And, okay, I will tidy it. <laughs> because, and again, I'm, I'm in there. I'm with him. So maybe, I, I don't know if it's him or them, but they cannot claim it's completely crazy. But at least it, it, it's in the, they see that I care, I really care that they fix this and they understand the risk. That if suddenly you had to rush through the room for any reason, then you would break a toy and you would hurt your feet. Any more? Any more questions? Oh. Okay, well, we are sharing all of the stuff, all of the... We'll be sharing the slides at uh, archive.hackloo2018 or something. Cooper is doing his usual fantastic job of putting all of these presentations up practically in real time because he's amazing. Yeah. And thank you very much.